Does it work? Yeah. So first of all, thank you, Piotr, because that presentation really made my day. So thank you. And um, so what we are going to talk now is about shipping desktop applications with uh, uh, the use of a uh, election and uh, enclosure script, of course. Uh, so this is a more like an exploration and invitation for you uh, to, to join me in having fun and uh, uh, using closure and, and specifically closure script uh, for creating desktop application as well and not just systems and, uh, and web apps. Uh, so quickly about myself, um, my name is uh, Ricardo. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter where I sing the, sing the praises and, oh my God, that's the laptop. Sing the praises of closure and closure script, although these days I'm mainly more about Brexit. Um, and uh, most of my time is actually dedicated to Hunter Starlings, which is a fully remote uh, software development company I co-founded a few years back with a handful of friends. Uh, I actually use mostly Ruby these days, but uh, I'm trying to sneak closure more in. So the setup we are going to discuss today um, um, is about these three elements, so Electron, Closure Script, and Reframe, which is going to provide the magic to drive the business logic. Um, what we want to do with this is introduce a, a way to build cross-platform desktop applications. Um, but that's obviously not the whole story. We also want a strong integration with uh, the native environment and with the ecosystem of the native environment. And I'm going to explain briefly what's that about. Uh, all of this using uh, Closure Script, of course. Um, so why do I think this is a good idea? Well, uh, mainly it's a pers personal preference, first of all, because web technologies is uh, what I do um, day after day. Um, also, there are many other web developers out there like me, so even if it might be a case of uh, if you only have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Uh, but if I can use uh, web technologies to uh, also build a sort of application, I will uh, try to do that. And I'm pretty sure other people would be uh, enjoying that as well. Also, um, obviously, hybrid application, web technologies apply to desktop uh, and native environments, usually raise the uh, critics or criticism of um, not being really performant, but uh, most of the cases, you don't really need to squeeze every last CPU cycle in order to get the job done. Um, Finally, uh, I mentioned cross-platform, and honestly, not having to worry about na native differences in, uh, in the various uh, platforms, so Windows or Linux or, or Mac OS, uh, pick your poison, is actually good because uh, it means that you can uh, distribute the application uh, to, to different um, audiences. Now, uh, I'll make references, or actually everything that I'm going to talk about uh, has been uh, a learning cure for me, of course, and uh, these are the two applications that I built uh, last year that kind of got me sold on, uh, mm -hmm. on this uh, platform. One is an um, interactive WebGL installation that I did last year, and the other one is actually just a time tracker, pretty dull, but pretty useful application that we're going, uh, using uh, internally uh, with my team. Now, coming to the, uh, the stack, um, the first element is Electron, is actually the cornerstone of uh, the whole stack. At this minimum, you can think of it as a, as a way to wrap um, a local website, in a sense, in a polished native shell and get access to all of the native goodies. Uh, you may have seen some of the applications that are based on uh, Electron out in the wild. Here are just a few, uh, mainly Atom, uh, the editor powered, uh, powered by uh, the GitHub team, Slack, and uh, WordPress.com now has an admin interface built on Electron. Um, finally, uh, just briefly on uh, how it works, uh, you can view it as a combination of Chrome, actually Chromium views that are called the renderers, uh, that are orchestrated by a central uh, node process, which is called the main. Now, the, the main process has full access to the host environment, which means that it's responsible uh, for native integration, which means anything from the, the taskbar to the dock to if you have a, one of the recent MacBook, the, the touch bar. And um, while well, the renderers take care, take care of the 
business logic interface. So everything that the, uh, that you build with HTML and CSS and JavaScript. Um, these processes can also communicate with each other uh, via built-in uh, IPC mechanism, um, which uh, also gives the render, so the Chrome processes, a way to access the native feature, uh, mean, uh, meaning that from your web logic you can actually drive uh, most of the native um, feature of your own, of your desktop environment. Uh, second element of the stack is reframe. Um, at its core, we can see reframe as a pattern to write single page applications on top of another library which is called Reagent. Um, now Reagent, uh, in turn, Offers, offers you a very simple thin wrapper on top of React, which is another web technology, which we are not going to uh, explore much in detail now because there is no time. Uh, but the idea is that it uses hiccup syntax to describe HTML component, and it provides specialized atoms uh, to define state. Um, and uh, I think we heard a lot uh, talking about uh, state so far, so I'm not going to dip too much into that right now. Um, but this is uh, as simple as an example as it gets uh, regarding reagent components. Um, the today component there uh, calls three other components in turn in order to uh, display stuff on the page. Um, two of these are defined elsewhere. The debug DB. Um, is just a div component, uh, a, a div element that is going to print out all of the state of my uh, current application. And that's really the core of the uh, region idea. Um, now, coming back to reframe, um, again, I'm not I'm trying not to spend too much time on this because there is going to be another talk later um, uh, specifically about reframe. Uh, but Reframe essentially builds on top of that and um, as mentioned on the pretty daunting README that comes with the library, it's, um, uh, it's just MVC, not as you know it. Um, to me, the main attractive, um, attractives of Reframe are the fact that it allows you to write pure functions, mostly, throughout the, um, most of the application you're writing, uh, making uh, the logic much easier to describe, to understand, to test, etc. Um, reframe, in a sense, takes care of all the rest, all the glue and the, and the boilerplate, uh, boilerplate um, namely the activation of the side effects. Also, and again, this is something that's been mentioned more than once today. It offers you a convenient way to think about how data moves uh, around the application and gives you strong uh, opinionated conventions on uh, where to place the, your logic and how to organize your code. And um, you may or may not like it. I find it really useful. Um, Finally, it's, a, it's a actually a really small library and uh, has a minimal API and the big part uh, uh, of it is actually in the readme file and uh, in the conventions that, uh, that come with it. Uh, really, really quickly, uh, what does it mean to write a, a reframe app essentially? It means following the six dominoes rules, uh, as they call it, which means uh, which essentially describe the flow of the, the logic throughout the application in a loop. So you start by dispatching an event, which can, then gets handled. Um, some effects are created, state is changed, um, queries subscribe to the state changes. Um, the, this subscription affects um, the views. And, uh, and, view, and from the views, the user can uh, actually action some change, and then you go back to the beginning. So to write an application in, in Reframe, what you need to do is essentially uh, take care of writing four layers that essentially that usually map to different namespaces, one for uh, treating all the events, uh, one for describing the data, one for curing the, the data changes, and one to actually display um, 
back to the user the, the current state. Um, more on that in Martin's talk uh, later, speech later. Um, so that essentially covers it for, for uh, what regards the stack. So what I think uh, is good in there, actually quite a lot. So first of all, um, it comes with uh, the development workflow that we all know and love. Um, in ClojureScript, that means uh, having a REPL, having a fig wheel uh, to connect directly to um, election and being able, uh, therefore, to manage all of the state uh, and expect all of the state of the application from, uh, from a REPL or from our editor. Uh, means also integration uh, with com dev tools which gives us a way to, um, yet another way to um, uh, inspect what is happening in, inside, inside of our application, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, secondly, Reframe gives us constraints. So uh, we heard uh, James talking about constraints earlier, uh, earlier today. Um, Reframe tries to solve uh, that problem by giving, giving us the way, a way to use pure functions in describing our logic and giving us uh, strong conventions to byte to, uh, to make the whole code more discoverable, for example, um, and make, making the logic predictable, therefore. Uh, third point, all state is in one place. Uh, again, as Marketa was saying uh, earlier on, in, um, atoms are used, a special type of atom is used by a reference to organize the app state. Uh, it also has, uh, come, comes with uh, a given name already, so you don't even get the choice there. Uh, the side effect, of course, is that everybody will know where your application state is. Uh, makes it really, really easy to uh, debug the current state because you can just, as we've seen before, print um, the whole of the state of your application. Uh, makes um, thanks to reagent as well, makes his history and undo trivial. Okay, they come for free. Um, and you can also use closure spec, for example, to describe your um, and validate your current state. Um, I would say this also comes with what I usually um, refer to as the only the good parts of the web, so you don't have to uh, worry too much about routing, for example. Um, you use state management for that. And um, yeah, uh, based on your writing on uh, on events, there are no browser wars because you only have one browser to say, uh, to think about. So Chrome is and uh, the latest version of Chrome usually as well. Um, you get all the native goodies. So um, with some at least um, common abstraction on top of it, so you get access, as you said, to dock, tray icons, desktop notifications, menu, taskbar, support. Um, touch bar if, um, if your um, laptop supports it, etc. Uh, finally, we got a solid, if somehow still complicated, um, approach to packaging, which is App Store proof. So you can actually take an Electron app and send it over to, to the App Store or uh, to the Chrome Play Store, etc. And uh, there is also a good story, and good support for after deploy. Um, so you get auto updates, and uh, they are really trivial to set up. Um, you got crash reporting as well, again, pretty trivial to set up. So um, the, the story and, uh, uh, of election, the environment, the ecosystem of election do, uh, doesn't end when, uh, when you publish an application, but it gives you also the tools to follow up on that, which I find really useful. Um, what to be aware of? Plenty of things, but uh, if you need to pick a few, um, that promise of cross-platform is something you may want to uh, pick with a, uh, take with a grain of salt because um, the, the choice that has been made in Electron has been to give pretty low-level access to uh, all of the goodies of uh, the platforms, which means that the API has slightly, slightly different names because when it needs to map with, uh, to the specifics. Uh, so you might find uh, you need to uh, use Tray um, as an object when, uh, when you support Linux, but uh, the same, fun same functionality is provided by the um, app.doc uh, object under, under macOS, which I found pretty confusing at the beginning. Um, also, if all your logic and state uh, belong to the render process, you, you will have a problem when people 
uh, close the window, essentially. Uh, your Chrome window uh, goes away, your app state goes away, so you need to make sure that some of that um, is persisted in the main uh, process, for example, or you find another way to deal with that. Uh, third thing, uh, the 60 FPS daemon. Um, if you want your application to feel native, you need to keep the promise of uh, maintaining 60 FPS, which means you only have 16 milliseconds uh, to make all of your computing, which means that if you want to do some uh, pretty heavy computations, you may have to uh, do some workarounds like split the computation in several chunks and uh, using a chain of events to process all of it or find another workaround. Um, sadly, well, you could also use web, work, web workers. Uh, I didn't get to that point, but um, if you stick to the, to the basic, um, you only have one thread to work with. So that's the main problem uh, with maintaining the promise of 60 FPS. Finally, uh, grokking reframes domino flow is something that takes a while. Um, actually, not that much. You, it, just takes the wheel of going through the, uh, the readme, it takes a while, but uh, it's pretty good, and uh, you will be happy you did that in the end. And uh, the last slide, uh, I guess, so what to improve? Um, at least from my perspective, what I'm, uh, these days I'm spending some time thinking about still is that uh, the tooling itself it's good, and uh, Clojure Script comes with a great story of uh, tooling uh, because it inherits it from, uh, from Clojure, but I think it's still not there uh, when it comes to JavaScript friendliness. We could do much better and much more uh, to um, invite and attract uh, JavaScript developers. That would be a great step forward. And finally, um, I still have to find a good metaphor or a good abstraction, a good bridge uh, between uh, the reframe flow and the domino uh, metaphor and uh, native um, and handling the native components because they are rendered outside of the DOM, so they're not really part of the flow. And with that, I actually ran out of time, so thank you very much. Uh, that was it. I actually have a, a GitHub um, repository where I'm uh, collecting experiments I do with uh, uh, this setup. So you're more than welcome to uh, have a look at that and uh, su submit pull requests or anything. That's me. Thank you very much.